What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be building a AI image generator with the OpenAI DAL E2 model. We're going to be building this in Swift UI using the OpenAI API. Without further ado, drop a like down below, open up Xcode, and let's create a brand new project. We're going to stick with the app template and we're going to creatively call this image generator. We'll stick with Swift UI for the interface and Swift, of course, for the language. I will toss it onto my desktop here and let me just full screen our IDE to get into things. Now, the first thing we're going to do is bring in a package, which is a nice wrapper on the OpenAI uh, API. Of course, you can write out your API calls directly, but it's a little verbose. So we're going to use this cool wrapper from Marco called OpenAI Kit. Now we're going to bring it in via SPM. So I'll just copy that URL there. We'll go to file. We're going to add a package, paste this guy in right there, should resolve it pretty quickly, just like so. And we'll hit add package, it'll resolve it, just grab whatever version it spits out, and we're in good shape. Let me just go ahead and give this a build and run in a simulator to make sure it is indeed popping up. Cool, it is, and we can get into the specifics. So the other tab that I've got opened up here is the OpenAI uh, developer page for API keys. We're going to want to generate a new API key. Um, or you can use an existing one that you have. So I'll hit this, we'll get an API key. And we're also gonna wanna take note of this organization identifier down here. In my case, it's just called personal. I'm only a part of one org, so we're gonna use that in a moment. So cool, first things first in here, let's go ahead and open, uh, rather import to open AI kit. And we're gonna create a class in here and I'm just gonna call it our view model. And it's going to be an observable object. And inside of here, we are going to have a setup function in which we will create the actual client. So the way we create it is we say open AI is going to be open AI and we can instantiate this with a configuration. And this configuration takes our uh, organization ID as well as our API key. So let me go ahead and just line break this to make it a little easier to read. And then we'll paste these values in like so. So there is our API key. And then for organization, this will be in my case, just personal. And I think that's the default one that they give you when you make an account. So that'll be what it is for the vast majority of you. Now we also want this to be global to this object so we can actually use it in the other method that we write in a second. So here we'll have OpenAI and we'll just assign it to that global instance specifically. Cool, so the next thing we wanna do is have one other function and this function is going to be generate uh, image with a prompt and this is essentially what will feed into the AI model and we expect to get a related image back So if I say show me an iPhone with eyes smiling, that's what I expect to get back now because we're working in Swift UI We want to be cool today. We are going to use uh, Swift concurrency, so no closures today and this is going to return a optional uh, UI image that we will toss into our view here once we get down to that so the first thing we are going to do in this method is we are just going to unwrap OpenAI. I'm just going to write the entire unwrap just for simplicity's sake, since not everyone is familiar with the shorthanded uh, update that was brought recently. So there's that. And inside of here, we want a do catch block. In the catch, we'll just return nil as well. And I'm also going to uh, print out a string describing the error. And in here, we actually want to do the work to get the image. So how do we go ahead and do that? So first we want to create some image parameters. So this is going to be things like the resolution that we want to get back, uh, the actual prompt itself. So we can as actually also see number of images and there's quite a few um, other um, optional arguments here that have default values. So, so the prompt here will be prompt. I am going to specify a resolution. This does impact the speed of obviously the API call and decoding and all that jazz. I'm going to stick with medium. And we are also going to, if I can spell this correctly, we are also going to specify the response format. What I care to get back is base64 JSON. This is important because this is how you are going to um, actually decode the response. You can get the URL to it. I'm going to actually use an async image. We're going to actually get the base64 and we will decode it ourselves. So now that we've created these parameters, this object essentially to send on up to our uh, API, we are going to say that this is going to be await, try, open AI, and we want to create an image. 
And we're gonna pass in these parameters, which I have creatively called params, like so. And let's see what else we wanna do. So let me just line break this here. Now we get this result back, but from the result, we actually want to first decode it and get the image. So the way we do this is by saying image is going to be results. And I believe result here, if we look at it, it's just image response has a data off of it, which is a collection. And the reason it's co a collection is because you can request multiple images back. We're just gonna grab the first one. Now I would unwrap it, but I'm 99% sure that it'll be there. And then from this, we are gonna get the actual image, which you'll notice is a string. So now that we've got the image in string format, why the heck is a string? So it's a string because we got it back in base64 format. So what we want to actually do is uh, convert it to an image. So let me call this data. And this is also a function off of the OpenAI client. Uh, it's something along the lines of decode 60, base64. So here it is, decode base64 image. It's nice that it's included. It's not related to really OpenAI, but um, it's nice that the helper method's included for you. So inside of here, we can actually just specify the data like so. So this call can actually throw. So we do want to say try in front of this in case it does throw an error. And then down here, we should be able to actually return said image. So if I go ahead and build, we shouldn't have any build errors, which in fact we don't. And let's see why this is yelling at me. So let's see, this is saying await, oh, try must proceed await. Oh, All right, so that's a nice warning we got from Xcode. So let me just flip these around. All righty. And we should be able to build out our view now and call into this API. So let's do that. Let me go ahead and just give this a build and run make sure we're not crashing or anything weird like that. All right, we are not. Let's build out our API or our view, I should say. So the first thing we wanna do here is create a observed object and this will be our view model. And this view model would just be an instance of the view model we created right up above. We are also going to want a field with text that we type in. So this will be the state that takes care of that. And then of course, we are gonna want a state for an image that will assign the result of this API call to. The next thing I'm going to do in here is just make this look a little nicer. So I'm gonna to toss in a navigation view with our VStack. We'll give this a nice title here of, um, let's see, we'll call this doll E image generator. We'll see if that's too long and I'll shorten it if need be. We are also going to say once this view appears, we wanna say view model setup. So we actually instantiate and assign our OpenAI clients like we did up here. And then what we want to actually do in here is pretty simple. So we're going to say if let image equals image, AKA we have a UI image. We're going to show an actual image view element. We're going to make it resizable. We're going to say the aspect ratio will be fit. We're also going to say scale to fit. And I'm going to give this a fixed frame width of maybe like 150 and a height of 150. And if we don't have a image, which we don't by default, we are simply going to say type prompt to generate image with an exclamation mark because it's exciting. And then right below it, what I'll do is we'll toss a spacer here and then we want a text field with a button. So um, what I'll do is I'll say a text field. We'll say type prompt here, dot, dot, dot. This is going to be a binding to the text we have up above. We'll maybe do a little padding on this. We'll just use the defaults. And then finally, right below it, we'll have our last element, which will be a button that says generate. And inside of here, we can actually make our API call. Now, usually I'd create another function to do this, but I'll just do it in here for sake of brevity today. So we have a single function that we need to call, which can um, you know, uh, be async. So we need to wrap it in a task. So we are going to say task here not tasks, singular task, and we are going to say uh, result is going to be uh, view model dot, and we want to generate an image, and we want to get the prompt, which will be our text. Now, this thing here uh, is going to be async, so we need to proceed it with an await. The other thing I'll do, actually, just for sake of simplicity, or rather correctness, is we're going to say if text uh, isn't empty, we want to do this. And if the user just adds a bunch of white spaces, we want to ignore that too. So we're going to say if text trimming white spaces uh, isn't empty, then we'll actually go ahead and do this. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. Kind of silly, wasting our API credits. 
So once we get the response back, we are going to first check if it in fact is not nil. So we'll say uh, self.image equals results. And it should never be nil, but for the sake of today, I'll just go ahead and say if results actually is nil, we'll just print out failed to get image. Alrighty, let's go ahead and give a build and run. A lot of typing. Let's see if what we actually built even works. So we have our text up there. We have our field and button down here. If we click it, everything moves up because it's Swift UI and it just works out of the box. And I'm going to give it something simple to start off with. So I'm going to say, whoops, let's get the keyboard back. I'm going to say, let's do, let me get this to go away. Let's do a green apple. Uh, let's hit generate. And we probably want to clear the field also. And let's give it a few seconds because it does take a moment. And boom, we get a green apple. And it looks like it's getting cut off. So let me actually um, change this here to remove this to make sure that it doesn't get cut off. And let's try something a little more creative. So we are going to say an iPhone with eyes smiling. So let's go ahead and give that a run. And it should take a few seconds and bear with it. And then boom, we get an iPhone with eyes and it is smiling. Now our image is a tad bit small here. So let's go ahead and just tweak this a smidge. And I'm also gonna add a spacer up here so things are vertically centered um, a little better. So there is our text in the middle. And let's do one last one and we will wrap up the video. So we'll say uh, a Ferrari on mountain road in front of waterfall. So pretty descriptive. Let's see how Dali performs at this. I have no doubt that it'll be amazing and bear with it. And boom, we've got a Ferrari in front of a waterfall on a mountain. So this uh, new AI uh, API available from OpenAI is pretty nuts. Dali is pretty crazy to begin with. So there's a lot of creativity potential here. So let me know in the comments down below if you've used this before, if you have any app ideas, uh, share on Twitter, LinkedIn, if you think it's cool. Love to hear what else you guys wanna see. I've just been like in the weeds of OpenAI API. Shout out to Marco again for the wrapper for this API, pretty cool. Makes your life way easier than writing out the API call and decoding directly. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one.